This is the Cyfox at home blood test. And in today's video, we are going to determine just how accurate it really is. Welcome to the channel. I'm Jenny and I've been doing a carnivore diet experiment for the past nine months. And I've been documenting my results with weight measurements, DEXA scans, continuous glucose monitoring and blood work. I originally found the Cyfox test on Instagram of all places. It was an ad that popped up. I had been looking for different blood tests online and I was really impressed with the markers that they test for. Some of those markers include fasting insulin, A1C, a whole standard lipid panel, ApoB, ApoA, along with some male or female hormones depending on the biological sex of the test taker. I signed up with them about four months ago, and so far I've been really happy with the ease of use and how fast I'm getting my test results back. But today I wanted to put the Cyfox test head to head with a blood draw so I can see just how accurate this Cyfox at home blood test really is. So here's how Cyfox works. You pay $97 for a membership fee that is for six months, and then you can test as many times as you want during that six month period for $97 a test. So $97 six month one time fee, and then $97 every time you send in a test to get tested. And every time you send a test in, they automatically send you a new one at no charge. You only get charged when you send in the completed blood test. So you could test yourself once a week if you wanted to. I, I think that's a bit excessive. You know, you don't really need to do that, but you know, maybe you do, maybe you're, doing an experiment or you're trying to tweak some numbers and I don't know, but it's cool. It's cool that you can do that as often as you want. Now, if you don't want to do the $97 membership fee, you can pay $245 for a one-time test. They also have another option where you can pay $165 per test if you subscribe and you don't have to pay that $97 membership fee every six months. So they have varying price points so that it's accessible to more people. The first time they send you a kit, they send you a starter kit that has extra Landsats and lots of instructions. And you can also order a continuous glucose monitor from here if you like. Once you receive the kit, you open it up and here is what it contains. Lancets, a blood collection card, bandages and gauze, alcohol pads, some instructions. This card illustrates how much blood you need to collect, a prepaid envelope to send the sample back, and a little bag with a desiccating packet to keep the sample secure, safe, and dry while shipping. Getting blood out of me is like getting blood from a turnip, so I started by doing some bicep curls and spinning my arms a bit. My children are laughing at me at this point, so mean. Next, wash your hands. You need to do the test in the morning after you've fasted for 12 to 14 hours, and you need to do it within one to two hours of waking. Do not consume anything except for water. If you're taking supplements, I would advise stopping those supplements for about 72 hours before you take this test or really any blood test. Next, wipe the sides of your fingers with the alcohol pad and let them dry. Then use a lancet on the side of your finger. After using the lancet, I like to hold my hand below my heart to get the blood to flow better. You're going to need a significant amount of blood. It's not just one drip. Each square needs four to six drops of blood, depending on the size of the drops. I usually have to lance myself two to four times to get what I need because, again, blood from a turnip. The blood needs to flow out to this line. No more, no less. It's 8.45 a.m. I just completed the Cyfox test, so I'm going to let this dry while we head over to LabCorp and get the blood draw. I got my blood drawn within an hour of completing the Cyfox test. She pulled my blood at 9.45 a.m. She got eight vials, and I was back to my car by 10 a.m. We are back home, and this blood sample is nice and dry, so let's package it up and send it off. A couple of things to note when you are packaging your Cyfox test. You need to make sure you've let it dry for at least an hour. A little bit longer is good. You're going to slip it into this envelope along with this desiccating packet. That's going to help keep it dry. You don't have to pay postage. The postage is covered in the cost of the test. You also need to look at this checklist on the back of the envelope and make sure you have put your name and date on the blood collection card. It's very important your name on the collection card is the same as the name that you have on your Cyfox health account. We will talk more about that later. All right, it is sent off and I will see you when I get the results. 
While we're waiting for the results, I wanted to tell you about my recently launched channel membership. For as low as $2.99 per month, you can support the testing and data gathering that I do. Click on the link in the description of this video to head over to the channel membership portal, where you can see all of the benefits of becoming a channel member. And as always, be sure to hit that subscribe button for a free and easy way to support this channel. Okay, it's been a total of 19 days and we finally have both results back. Cyfox Health took 19 days, LabCorp took a day and a half. Now the reason the Cyfox Health took 19 days was not an error on their part, it was on mine. I wrote the wrong last name on the blood collection card. I got married a couple of years ago and I still haven't switched everything over to my married name. And I could not remember for the life of me which last name I used to sign up for the CyfoxHealth.com, the, the portal where you get your results. So I wrote the wrong name on the card, it didn't match up and there was a discrepancy and so I did not get my results back for 19 days. After about two weeks, I hadn't gotten my results back yet. I knew that they had arrived at the lab because SciFox is really good about sending you emails, you know, telling you every step along the way so you know what to expect. They had received the blood sample but I had not gotten the results yet, which is not normal. Normally it takes about seven to 10 days to get those results. So I emailed them and they let me know about the last name, Snafu, and we got that fixed. So 19 days later, I have my results. I do have one little note though. I wish that they would have emailed me about the last name not matching. I had to wait while I thought they were processing it for two weeks before I emailed them. I guess I could have emailed them sooner, but I just thought, oh, maybe it's taking longer this time. I just wish that they had gotten a hold of me when that problem came up so that we could have moved that along faster. But that was, that was my fault for that. So typically I'm getting my results back within seven to 10 days at the very most for the Cyfox Health results. These tests should be pretty similar because one of the things that Cyfox Health prides itself on is being similar to standard labs. Cyfox Health works with a CLIA or CAP accredited lab that performs extensive validation on each assay to meet federal CLIA requirements, which means that the at-home blood tests, as long as they're done correctly, should be as good as a lab draw. The total cost for the Cyfox Health at-home blood test was $114. That's $97 for the actual test and $16 for the unlimited membership fee. The total cost for the ownyourlabs.com tests with the blood drawn at LabCorp was $300. Let's compare all 18 results side by side. Now, because these two blood tests were taken an hour apart, there may be some differences due to the timing and that's totally fine. I'm basically looking for the results to be within 10 to 20% of each other. I think that's more than acceptable. And if a value is way off, then I'm going to default to the blood draw as being the more accurate of the two numbers, simply because they used more blood when they were testing. Okay, I'm going to label them on the screen for you so you know which is which, and we're just gonna go down this list real quick. First, we have the HSCRP, which is used as an inflammation marker in the Cyfox test. For Cyfox, it was 0.6, and for LabCorp, it was 0.37. Next, we have ferritin. This is another inflammation marker. For Cyfox, it was 69, and for LabCorp, it was 136. Next is homocysteine, another inflammation marker. Cyfox, 6.2, LabCorp, 6.3. Next, we have D25. Cyfox does put this in two sections of their readout. The first one is under inflammation. Cyfox came in at 65.5, and LabCorp came in at 47.2. Next, we're gonna move into what Cyfox Health calls their metabolic fitness category, and the first marker is A1C. Both Cyfox and LabCorp measured me at 5.4. Next, we have the fasting insulin. Cyfox was 6.51, and LabCorp was 5.5. Cyfox also puts the D25 reading in the metabolic health category. The next category we're moving into is called balance, and we start off with morning cortisol. Cyfox measures it at 12.3, LabCorp, 11.2. Next is estradiol. Cyfox, 72.5. LabCorp, 53.8. FSH, for this one, I did not test this one. I failed at life. So the Cyfox test that I was referring to, I should have looked at these results here and known that they tested FSH, but I was looking at that Instagram post that I showed you in the beginning that listed out all of the different hormones for either men or women, and it wasn't listed on there, so I missed that one. So Cyfox measured me at a 5.13, but LabCorp didn't measure me at anything because there's no test. So we're just gonna exclude that test 
from this review. Next, we have TSH, Cyfox 1.21, LabCorp 0.999. Next, we're moving into the cardiovascular section of the Cyfox test, starting with APOA, Cyfox 166, LabCorp 156. Next is APOB, Cyfox 135, LabCorp 100. Next is triglycerides, Cyfox 54, LabCorp 64 followed by HDL cholesterol, Cyfox 57, LabCorp 71. For the LDL cholesterol, Cyfox had me at a 142, LabCorp 164. My total cholesterol was 209 with Cyfox and 246 with LabCorp. Now we're gonna go into some fun ratios. Cyfox does include these ratios in the experimental section of the test readout, so we will include them as well. First, we have the triglycerides to HDL ratio. Cyfox was 0.94, LabCorp was 0.9. Next, we have the total cholesterol to HDL ratio. Cyfox was 3.66 and LabCorp was 3.46. Finally, we finish up with the ApoB to ApoA ratio. Cyfox was 0.81 and LabCorp was 0.64. Now that we're through all of the markers, let's talk about them. We're gonna start with the markers that were very close or exactly the same. So first we have homocysteine, that's an inflammation marker. For Cyfox, it was a 0.62 and for LabCorp, it was a 0.63. That's pretty much the same. The A1C was exactly the same, 5.4. The triglyceride to HDL ratio was within 4%, and the total cholesterol to HDL ratio had a 5% difference. With APOA, there was a 6% difference. The Cyfox test measured me at 166, while LabCorp measured me at 156, so that's pretty close. And then the morning cortisol was within 9%. And this tracks perfectly with you know, how cortisol works. Cortisol is highest in the morning and it declines throughout the day. So I did take these tests within an hour of each other. So for the Cyfox test, I was at a 12.3 at 8.45 in the morning. And then one hour later, I was an 11.2. So that does track with how cortisol works. Um, I don't know, you know, all these blood tests and blood testing companies use different equations, different standards of test, not different standards of testing, but different like reference ranges and different types of tests to get their numbers. So I don't know how much of that is that and how much of it, how much of the difference between the two is just, you know, the cortisol level naturally declining throughout the day. So I consider that to be very close. Next, there were six markers that were within 10 to 20% difference between the two tests, and we're gonna call those accurate as well. First was LDL cholesterol. There was a 14% difference between the two, and same with the total cholesterol, it was a 15% difference. So what I think is going on with the cholesterol numbers in this section, especially the LDL cholesterol and the total cholesterol, are a few things. Um, first off, I was fasting an hour longer in the LabCorp test, and the LabCorp test did measure me higher. Um, for the Cyfox, my LDL was 142, and for the LabCorp, my LDL cholesterol was 164, so it was slightly higher. Same with the total cholesterol, Cyfox 209, LabCorp 246. So one thing that could be happening, uh, it could be related to the fact that I was fasting longer. So as you fast longer, your LDL cholesterol numbers tend to go up. This is because the lipoproteins are delivering fuel, energy to your cells. This is something that Dave Feldman talks about in his theory called the lipid energy model. Basically, your lipoproteins are delivery chucks and they are bringing energy to the cells. So if you are fasting longer, you're going to be using your adipose tissue, your fat stores to supply energy to your body. So it follows that I had been fasting for a longer period of time my body had more LDL particles to deliver more energy to my cells because you gotta have energy, right? Um, so if that theory is true, then that would follow with this. But another thing that could account for those two differences is just the different equations that are used to calculate LDL cholesterol. One of them is the Friedwald, uh, the Friedwald equation, and then there's like seven or eight more. So I don't know which equation LabCorp or Cyfox uses for calculating LDL cholesterol, so the differences could be in there as well. Again, also each company uses their own tests and their own reference ranges and things like that, so there's going to be a little bit of difference, but I think 14% difference for LDL cholesterol and 15% difference are pretty darn close. Next, we have the fasting insulin. There was a 15% difference between the two, so the Cyfox had me at a 6.51, LabCorp 5.5, and I'm wondering, my theory on it is that, you know, as I got further away from that last meal, 
the longer period of time fasting, my insulin just kind of evened out a little bit more. So it did decline by a point. So I don't know if that's, you know, it actually declined that much or if there's just slight differences in testing methods between the two labs. But yeah, um, I would consider 15% to be pretty darn accurate. Next, we have triglycerides with a 16% difference between the two. The TSH had a 17% difference between the two. Cyfox was 1.21 and LabCorp was 0.999. This is a number I do not have as much experience with like I do with the cholesterol numbers. As far as like knowing what ranges are in normal categories for me. So I don't know if this is one of those numbers that fluctuates a lot throughout the day, like with cortisol starts high, goes low, um, and different sex hormones if they go up and down. So that is an interesting question. If you know the answer to that, leave it in the comments below. I'm always wanting to learn more about this stuff. The final number of the six that were within 10 to 20% accuracy was the HDL cholesterol coming in at 20%. The Cyfox test measured me at 57 and LabCorp at 71. Now we're moving into the six markers that had more than a 20% difference between the two of them. And the first one was the ApoB to ApoA ratio. That was at 21% difference. And the reason for that high difference was because the ApoB was 25%. There was a 25% difference between the two of those. So the Cyfox test had me at 135 for ApoB. LabCorp had me at 100. That's a discrepancy. So that's going to throw that ratio off. Next is estradiol, 26% difference between the two. Now this is another one of those that I don't know if that variance is because of the time of day or um, different fluctuations in my hormones, things like that. So we're probably going to end up giving that one kind of a free pass just because I think that there's a lot of variation in that number. So that's probably where we're seeing that. Next is the D25. There was a 28% difference between the two. And this was something that I saw in a video with Dave Feldman and the CEO of Cyfox. And he was talking about with the vitamin D numbers, how they match the blood draw. They can be higher or they can be lower. They're seeing some interesting things with that particular test. And for me, consistently over the last three Cyfox tests that I've had done, they're measuring my vitamin D levels as a lot higher than what they are. I guess maybe not a lot higher, 28% higher in this one. But I, that's one number that I really like to have a super accurate number on because I live in the Chicagoland area and our winters are brutal and gray and just dark. And I really try to get as much vitamin D as humanly possible for mental health issues. And also because, you know, immunity issues, vitamin D is vital for, for metabolic health. So that's one marker that I'm really, really particular on, I guess. So I was not happy that that was 28% off. Next is the HSCRP. So this is an inflammation marker. It's also a cardiovascular marker. And you wanna keep this below a one to keep it very, very low. So for the Cyfox test, I was at a 0.6 and LabCorp, I was at a 0.37. So there was a 38% difference between the two. They were both still low, 0 0.6 is fine. 0 0.37 is better, but they're both low inflammation. So that's fine, but uh, still a 38% difference between the two tests. And the final marker that was just like way, way, way off was ferritin. The Cyfox test had me at a 69 and the LabCorp measured 136. So there was a 49% difference between those two tests. I was hoping that taking the Cyfox test first, since it's only a few drops of blood, would mitigate some of the potential testing discrepancies. Like if you take a large amount of blood, you can drop your iron levels, your ferritin levels. So I did the Cyfox test first, but it didn't do anything to, you know, uh, change anything there. Because if that had been the case, then the Cyfox test should have been higher and then the LabCorp lower, right? Uh, but in this instance, my Cyfox test was lower and my LabCorp was higher. So I do not know what is going on with that one, but that was the marker that was most off at 49%. And of course, the one marker that I forgot was FSH. So I am not including that in this review whatsoever. 
Okay, we got through all of the results. Now, the question that we were trying to answer here is, how accurate is the Cyfox at-home blood test when compared to a lab draw of the exact same markers? 12 of the 18 tests were either exact, very close, or within 10 to 20%, leaving six of the 18 tests that were off by more than 20%. But I think at least two of those six were due to hourly fluctuations. So I'm going to call it as 14 out of the 18 markers were accurate. That is a 78% score out of 100. It could have been as high as 79% if I hadn't forgotten that FSH test and if that FSH test result had been within 20% of the blood draw. So what are my thoughts on this number? I honestly think that 14 out of 18 is pretty darn good, especially for the price point, $114 per test for the Cyfox at-home blood test when compared to buying all of those lab draws separately was $300. I'm definitely going to be finishing out my six month membership, probably do a couple more tests and I might extend it for another six months. And I do think that as Cyfox Health continues to grow, if they continue to grow, as more people you know, start to do the tests, they're going to be able to make some tweaks and hopefully get the at-home blood test to be as accurate as possible. I am not sponsored by LabCorp, ownyourlabs.com or Cyfox Health, but I have included links to all of their websites in the description, along with a list of the tests that I had done at the LabCorp um, with the ownyourlabs.com, got them on ownyourlabs.com. And I'll also put how much I paid for each of the tests, just in case there's something on there that you would like to get tested for yourself. On the screen, I'm going to link a couple of videos that I think you might enjoy. The first will be the results of my latest experiment. And right over here, here is a link to my full blood work after six months on the carnivore diet. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful and I will see you next time.